This video introduces the project management life cycle. The project management life cycle has a number of stages or phases indicated in blue on this image. This graphic comes from Kloppenborg's Contemporary Project Management Textbook. However, all project management textbooks will feature a similar life cycle. Note that sometimes the names of the stages or phases may be slightly different. This first stage is selecting and initiating. Some textbooks may also call this the concept stage. All projects begin as just an idea or concept. Think of some products that we now use every day, such as smartphones, Wi-Fi, Netflix and digital cameras. These all just started as ideas. Project management made them actually happen. This stage is important for making sure a project or the project's output or desired result is truly required. While this initiating stage is considered part of the project life cycle, in truth there really is no project as yet. At initiating stage it's just an idea or concept or potential project. Why is this stage important? Organisations need to make decisions about which projects to commit to. For example, imagine your business has $50,000 to invest in a new project. There are five potentially good projects that would cost $200,000 in total. Obviously, your business needs to decide what it should and more importantly, what it should not do. Organisations need a way to make sure they pick the best project to pursue. A little bit more on that later. At this stage, the question is, should this idea or concept become a project? The level of effort reflects this, as we don't want to spend a lot of time and money on an idea that may never be worth transitioning to a real project. A project charter is the key document used to pitch the project. Sometimes this is called a project proposal or project brief or even a business case or feasibility study. Within this stage, projects are researched and the project charter is a high-level brief about the project and why it should exist. The project charter is assessed usually by a senior leader, project board, a client or even a project management office. And if the project is formally approved, then it will be considered an official project and progress to stage two. You may notice the term stage ending gates. Submitting and approving the charter is considered a gateway to the next stage. Planning. In this stage, the newly approved project is planned out in detail. There is now a formal project. You will notice the level of effort increases as we need to fully plan the project out as if it will be implemented. The project plan details areas such as scope of the project, what should be included, the schedule or timeline, the budget or planned costs, possible risks and how they will be managed, the quality standards for the project work, the resources that are needed such as people and equipment, the project's procurement requirements, that is what needs to be purchased, the communications plan and a plan to manage the different stakeholders on the project, such as the client, the project's work team and suppliers. Once the detailed project plan has been approved, it's time to implement or execute the project. At this point, there is usually a formal project kickoff meeting or communication which indicates transition from planning to execution. Executing. Project execution can also be called implementation. This is where all of the work gets done. Before this were only planning tasks. The project manager and team will be following the project plan and checking that everything is progressing as it should. Within execution, the project manager is checking planned versus actual work performed and providing progress reports to certain stakeholders, such as a client. The process of monitoring and controlling performance is a major part of this phase. The key documents are progress reports, 
However, other documents are also used throughout this phase, such as discussing and maintaining the risk register, managing requested changes using a change request process, and capturing lessons learned during implementation. Once all work has been performed to the satisfaction of the client or other key stakeholders, that is, the project has achieved the desired result, the project can move to the final stage. Closing and realisation. This can also be called finalisation. Once the client has signed off that the project has been delivered to expectations or other specific success criteria, the project manager closes off the project. All the work is done, it's now time to wrap up the final components. This could involve a number of different tasks or activities to bring about administrative closure such as ensuring all final bills or invoices are paid, relocating the project team members to other areas of the organisation or new projects, conducting evaluation and review activities, archiving documents and other records, sending out final communications and having a celebration with the team to thank them for their involvement and effort. A key activity in the closing or finalisation stage is a project review, where all key stakeholders gather together and evaluate the project. They will want to ask questions like, was the project a success? What was learned? What major changes and issues occurred between planning and execution? Was everything done correctly and completely? Were the stakeholders satisfied? How well was scope and other changes managed during the project? The key document in this stage is a finalisation report. For some projects, a further review date is scheduled to measure whether the project actually delivered benefits.